Another way of thinking about this, um, we can write the equation a different way. We can say, we can use the delta P is F net delta T form. And we can say, well, we could divide through both sides by delta T, which is a scalar. It's just some t time. So we can say delta P over delta T is F net. Well, if we take the limit here, what we've got is dp dt, right? So since, since in this case, gamma is certainly very close to 1, what we have here is delta mv delta t is f net or since the mass isn't changing, we have to be a little careful, but in this case it's certainly not. Um, so basically we're saying that the rate of change of the velocity is equal to the net force. So if we take, if we take the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta v over delta t, we get dv dt, which is the rate of change of velocity. This has a name. It's called acceleration. And it's sometimes written as an a vector. Um, some people like this a lot, especially because there's a word that, that, that goes with it, whereas the, the limit of delta p over delta t is doesn't have a special word. It's just the rate of change of momentum. I, I actually like this better partly because it's more primal. That's what gets changed by a net force. But, but partly because this is a word that has all these everyday meanings too. And so sometimes we always think of speeding up when we talk about acceleration. And in fact, since it's the rate of change of a vector, it could be slowing down, it could be turning and whatnot. So, so there's confounds, whereas it's, it's actually. So if the momentum, so, so we can make a graph. Let's just talk about P sub x here. So here's P sub x as a function of t. So we're saying dp dt is f net. So the book was traveling with constant momentum in the x direction, which means that a graph of p sub x versus time would look like that. Well, the slope of this graph is the net force in the x, f net x. So that the slope is f net x. So the slope is 0. That says f net x is going to be 0. What would happen if f net x wasn't 0? Suppose it was constant. Then we'd have, for example, something like that. Net force would mean the momentum, constant net force in the x direction would mean the momentum keep increasing. So we need to keep, practice think, keep practicing thinking this way. Um, it's not natural yet, but it, it will become natural. Comments or questions about this? So the answer to the question was, just to be clear, two. So the the 40 some percent of you who said two were correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I, I was trying to talk about that when I talked about the transient. Yes, absolutely. The the whole if you're thinking about the period when it starts from rest and speeds up, then then the slope is the slope of p sub x is not zero, and the the net force must have been non-zero, and and 
the X component would have been positive. And so, yes, you would have had to exert a force greater than the friction force during that period. The, the, the reason that's not the answer is that the question says it's moving with constant momentum, which implies that we're, we only started observing it after someone had gotten it moving. We don't know what what made it get moving, but it's already moving. And that's the night that remember that's that's the beauty of this momentum now having the entire history of the object added up into it. So all the forces that somebody exerted to get it up to speed and all that they've all gotten added up in here, and we don't need to know its history. All we know now need to know is that it's moving now. Yeah, good point. Other points. Okay. So what we're going to do now is worry about trying to put it all together and predicting the path something will will travel in um, when its when its momentum is changing. And what we're going to do um, basically is the following thing. Um, remember that we also alluded to the fact that that if the net force is constant, we can, we can, and in fact, this is, this is true even for just, just a component. So I'll write it as, as say, F net X, then V average X is, is truly the average of V initial plus V final over two for some interval. And again, that's because we have this graph of V sub X versus T. And if we take some interval, T1, T2, the initial, the final, because it's increasing linearly, the average is, in fact, going to give you a reasonable average. This is not the case if it's not increasing linearly. For example, suppose it's doing that. And we take some interval here. Okay, the the middle here is actually not a particularly good estimate of the the average velocity in the x direction. It's going to be too low because it spent more of its time going faster than that, and so. So in those cases, it's often just as well to take v final and just be sure you take small time steps. And we'll explore this a little bit today. 